We told her not to come back because she's better. We really don't want her. We've had visitors in the city hall today. The outlack of ladies came today to see if we had any employees that needed to make adjustments in their plans and what have you. They've been on board with us for quite some time. They made their annual visit today to allow employees to make any new choices or not. I don't know how that went. I'm not associated with the outlack group, but we have several employees that have chosen to take some of their beneficial plans. Got a few things we want to talk about today and then I'll open it up for miscellaneous again if we have some additional time. Airvac, we call it Airvac. I think it's actually got a new name since they've merged with some companies, but it's a contract we've had for our citizens for several years. It's coming up, I believe the actual due date on it's around the 1st of March, maybe the 3rd of March, Amy said. But we'd have to vote to uh, extend this contract and, and pay that bill probably by the end of this month, and that total is $21,855. That covers any citizen that, that lives in the city limits of Hamilton um, for additional $35 per family. I believe you can get extended coverage to go outside the city and you'd have an area back lift uh, maybe anywhere that you are in the country. There's a minor fee for each family if you want to have extended coverage. But they're not offering this to cities anymore, so if we don't renew our contract, uh, we wouldn't be able to come back later and ask for it back. So we need to be sure that we keep it in my opinion. Of course, we'll bring that to a vote uh, at a meeting soon. Not sure to be on the Monday night agenda. If you want to address it Monday night, we will. Tuesday night. Pay at the new date. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. Excuse me. <laughs> that is a Monday holiday. Yeah. Uh, total holiday. Tuesday night. We did move that meeting. Okay. Thank you for the correction. Uh, so we probably need to attend to that business Tuesday night. Um, we are going to need to post a job at the Recreation Center. Uh, Tim Kerr and I talked this morning. He's doing a job description to go with that job and he's working on the fine tuning the job description. And the new hire would be uh, under that job description and he was gonna give each of you a copy of that to review. And we'll consider that in our hiring replacing an employee at the rec center. Let me is this going to be a new employee? Replacing one. Okay, okay. Well, that's what I'll be okay. okay. It's, it's, it's what, just... Who is retiring? Who, what's, it going, what's the job going to be? Uh, it'll be probably a program's assistant, something in that nature. I'm, I'm, I'm not... It, it won't be a... a Technician or operator, you know, machine operator most likely will be somebody directly involved with the youth programs. Well, you know, for, I, really, before I guess everybody feels the same way I do, before we start talking about hiring somebody and recommending somebody, I'd want to know what that job's going to be because most of us know everybody at some time of the year who might be. Know, better suited for the job than somebody else. If we had two or three, well, one of them might be, could do the job better than somebody else for certain jobs. So uh, before I, I'd like to know exactly. Well, every person will be entitled to uh, uh, employment opportunity and uh, will be given an opportunity to apply for that job. Then they'll be screened 
for the needs and that kind of thing before any hiring is done, of course. Then all, the, all that procedure will be followed closely. But I, I can see uh, a good point in your concerns, Jane. But we'll make sure that we uh, have a good understanding about that and, and uh, a person that uh, very suitable for that position. Uh, we have Tim here with us. He had put in his budget for a, uh, a firefighter's uh, job uh, for this coming year, and we want to talk about that today and want Tim to explain how this will help his department, how, uh, some areas, some shortfalls he has now, and we can discuss it briefly, but I'd like to hear the story straight from Tim. Well, um, whatever it give you some time to talk to the council here today about this. It's, uh, we still got one shift that's not covered, took with two people, we're covering it with part-time people, and we try to keep two there at night all the time as far as all the runs and stuff go, not letting them go out on the runs by themselves. And we still got one shift that's still covered with part-time people. Uh, that's getting to be, I think, what I just was told just a little bit ago when my part-time people be leaving. So I leave this with one. And it's, uh, they got to be certified to work. It's for the where the hold up is we can't just go get somebody off the street and throw them in there and turn them loose I guess. And this will give us two on the shift. Uh, the school that they normally go to in the most shows, I was at a meeting last week. They're just about full. It's starting we've been the other schools have been we've been having to get out and recruit people to go up there. Now He's told me that he's got maybe one or two spots left open. Florence speaks in R10. They're having a big car in, up in North Alabama. Uh, he said he couldn't hold a spot, but it, we got to get some registered. And I knew with the process, it's two month, two weeks, a month out before you can ever do anything. So I wanted to get the process started at least so we can try to get him in that school and most shows instead of trying to send somebody to Tuscaloosa. Have you got somebody in mind? Well, no, not no. in mind. Oh. We'd have to take some applications. Oh, okay. And then we have to pass the... CPAT, and that's... Yeah. And there's a lot of... There's a lot before... There's a lot to go on before any harm is done. Well, what do, you, do we don't have to start. We have to do something now before you start trying to get somebody... Well, you'd have to open it up. Open it up the job opening. Okay, then... I would have to have y'all permission to... Move forward, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I'll make a motion we move forward then. We'll have to do it. Hold up, hold up, motion for Monday night. Hold that motion, G. But I just wanted you to be aware because it's 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 a good one. I'm 55 years old and I can't remember. Well, you're two old years older than me. The the job posting and the employment applications. Need to be allowed by us at the next meeting yeah. so he can move forward. He, he's got a deadline to meet, or it we'll is. probably have to send the person to the academy in Tuscaloosa. With that comes motel bills and extra expenses of them being out of town. So I'd like to get the process started because it is a long process. And most just... of our guys go and come to this academy mm -hmm. and muscle show. It's an easier drive for them. So it helps us not bear as much expense in getting our personnel trained. So, Tim, we appreciate you coming yes. today and explaining your need, and we'll try to act on that for you Monday night. Okay. If anyone should want to talk to Tim uh, uh, more in detail, just give him a call. He's Come available. By He's available. Hey, we'll go by and, and, and <laughs> visit with him for that matter. Tuesday night. Tuesday night. All right, thank you. Okay, and uh, you, you we, uh, we have a uh, job opportunity at the library. It's a part-time job. That was in a STARS budget for this year. And 
we'll be ready to act on that uh, Monday night, August, Tuesday night also. I'll get this right in a little bit. But uh, we already have applications for this position. We'll be doing some fine tuning on that, some streaming and what have you. Uh, we'll be looking to maybe announce uh, uh, hiring Monday night a, a part time worker for the library. Um, Angela had mentioned that with the upcoming uh, elections and new administration for the next four years happening this summer, that this would be the proper time to address whether or not there would be any fee changes or schedule changes in the uh, pay for the mayor and the council uh, for the following administration. It wouldn't affect this administration, but would it would become effective when the new administration is sworn in in November of 2020. This is a yes or no. Uh, this is for discussion. I have no recommendations on this matter. It's just open for discussion uh, to you all if you want to talk about it today. Current the mayor's salary is 35000 a year. Current council fees, of course, is five hundred dollars per month or per uh, yeah per month. And, uh, <coughs> I don't know how that compares to cities the size of Hamilton. I haven't done a survey. So, as a matter of fact, we just talked about this yesterday and. I had thought Angela would be here and would have more information for us, but uh, she wasn't able to come today. But if y'all want to think about that, it doesn't have to be decided today. If you want to think about it in your mind, and if you want to bring it back up to discussion at any other time, it would be fine. The mayor's salary is just 35000 a year? Yes. I don't know where I got to figure out how to get more than that. production per thousand gallons and right now things aren't good for Alan. He's has a, had a tragedy in his family this past week and so he couldn't be with us today but we're trying to line him up for the next work session okay. to uh, discuss what it really costs the city to produce our water and he's doing an analysis on that for us and almost finished with it as a matter of fact. And he's doing some work on our wastewater. Um, too. Yeah, I it when we talked about it the last time we were losing money. Huh? Yeah, we are. And we can't. That, that's silly. Last week we gave $36,000 more dollars to the water department uh, in, in addition to what I mentioned to you. And the other was $38,000. Yeah. That's a lot of money to be just. So the costs of, of operations have gone up. And uh, even though the, the bond payment uh, used to be billed to the uh, water department has gone away, uh, there's still lots of expense in running uh, purification and uh, wastewater treatment plants and, uh, of course, maintaining lines and everything has just gone up. We got a call from Wes uh, Spiller. Rodney and I met with him and Philip Pugh there in front of your house. When you beeped at us, yeah, yeah. we're looking at that problem. There's wastewater and sewer running out of the ground there uh, in the middle of the highway. 
and now the highway is beginning to sink there to, around that uh, area where it runs out. And, uh, we're having to get a camera brought from Birmingham to go inside that line and see where that water's getting in. It's a lot of it's surface water that's getting in our sewer line and it's boiling it out in the highway. And it's uh, it's a problem. It's it's going to become a large problem because it's undermining the highway there. Right. And that's got to be addressed. He was wanting to know if we had a plan uh, because they promised to help us with the asphalt part if we can get the sewer line re remedied. And, Fortunately, those lines are not real deep right there, so we can get into them. But we don't know how much of the highway we've got to do up to find the problem. But we're trying to do it with a camera. And there's some people that will bring their cameras and, and go inside that line and look for holes or leakage, one or the other. Something's causing a lot of surface water to come in there. Once it boils out in the highway, it's going back in a storm drain for the most part. But it's undermining the, the road itself. That's the problem we're faced with. We get rid of the water pretty good. Most of the water is not sewer. Most of it's surface drainage water. But uh, we're trying to remedy the entire problem. And Rodney's got with the people that have the camera, and they're supposed to come uh, one day next week and try to help us solve that particular problem. These. Big rains like we're having just overwhelm almost everything. We just had a road wash in two night before last over here at Janice Clark's and Clark Branch uh, uh, washed away an eight inch line. They repaired the line but couldn't get enough compaction on the road. When the next big rain came, it, it blew the road and took half of it out. So it's too dangerous to leave open, so it's closed right now. Street department's been over there working all day, and they're going to take about two more days to repair that road and get that covered back in. But uh, it's just some things we're faced with. Um, the rains seem to be more intense than they've been in a while. Think about the uh, matter we talked there uh, as to whether or not you want to address, address that, and that's just something. Uh, that she said we would have to cover before the next uh, election and this would be the proper time to address it on the compensation for the council and the, the mayor. Uh, Angela and I reviewed our uh, renewal proposal for our package insurance uh, yesterday with uh, Ricky Sims and Matt Sims. Uh, the Annual premiums went up about uh, $7,000 uh, from last year. Uh, the new package total, including liability, everything but workers' comp is in this, uh, $152,822 is our package proposal from your insurance center. And I'll let anybody that needs a copy of this review get Amy to make them a photocopy of this package. And uh, we have a liability insurance uh, that is based off of uh, two million dollars with an aggregate limit of three three million dollars, two million dollars for several different incidents and I think in, in one case the aggregate of all could be around four million dollars if, if certain incidents happen in a certain way. So we've got a good bit of liability insurance uh, for calamities uh, that may come up but you, it's hard to have too much insurance. I've asked Ricky to go back to the rec center well, they had it valued at three million three hundred and thirty one thousand dollars and I asked I said well, we just spent three million dollars renovating it's got to be worth more than three million dollars so he was going to go yesterday and take Matt and they're going to look at the building get the dimensions of it and do a, a new evaluation on that I told him we wouldn't be interested in 
uh, having a commercial appraisal done on it, but they've got some rule books for insurance matters that they follow, and uh, he might uh, be changing that number a bit uh, from what they have it now. Uh, just to give you an idea what the premium uh, total is for a building like that and contents, uh, it's $4,002 a year to insure 3.3 million uh, coverage. And if it were to go to four and a half or five million, probably wouldn't be over $5,000. So, so I, I think it might be worthy of adding a little bit of value to that in case we had a fire or something. It'll, I, I think the building will withstand a lot of wind I think the wind is the, not our big worry. Uh, an outbreak of a fire or something, I think, could do a lot of damage to the building. But I don't think wind is going to be our culprit that would destroy that building. It, it, it takes some unbelievable wind, I think, to blow that building away. It's very strong. I think you need five million to cover it because. He was going to go back and look at it and probably make some adjustments. But if anybody needs a copy of our insurance proposal, you're welcome to get you a copy of that. I had a call today from Tyler Knight. Uh, he is looking to build a building, and he said, personally financed. I don't know if he's got partners in this or if he's going to do it. And it's for special training for school students only. Children that are, that are joining programs in Birmingham and Tupelo and outlying areas. If they're wanting to do uh, workout training, special training, if they're going to specialize in travel ball, he'll be providing them a place to train and uh, this kind of thing. Some of it will have AstroTurf on it, some of it will have uh, half gym for basketball, and have weight training, all this stuff. What he's asking the city to participate in, he would like to have one acre of land from the city, somewhere in the city, to build this building on. And I told him I didn't know what the possibilities are. I haven't talked to Scott Hunt to see if it's even allowable. But he's asked the city to provide an acre of land and he'll do all the building and the parking lots and this kind of thing, according to what he told me today. And this is for uh, students only, not older kids. It's for students that are trying to get into these uh, travel ball programs and things like that or that are having to go off somewhere to do their specialized training. Um, he's got in mind to bring all these children back to a training center here where they can get their training. Now, would it only be Hamilton students or would it be the area? That is a good question. Uh, I'm not sure. I know it's just school students, but I don't know the answer to that, Wayne. That's a good question. But he had suggested uh, today that he had driven by the uh, Munson Wire property. He'd like to go to one side of it and have an acre uh, that he could put a building on out of that property. That's the land he'd suggested. And I just told him that we'd be meeting and that I'd bring it up to you guys and let you think about it. And if you, any of you want to make contact with him and get more of his plan, uh, we were just on a phone conversation today. It's very, it's kind of brief. Uh, but at any rate, uh, he was asking for the city to get involved if we had any land that we could let him have to build a uh, He said as close to the school as possible where the kids could leave school in the evening and come directly to his center or the center he's going to provide. I don't know who the trainers will be. I guess there'll be some, someone that's good at baseball, someone that's good at basketball, whatever training they're 
needing. I don't know that he'll be the trainer, but he's going to have some trainers available, as I understand it, in that facility. But he's asking the city to participate with him since he's bringing this to students here. And uh, I just told him that I didn't know what the possibilities were, but he did talk about it. Um, and he wouldn't mind any one of you uh, giving him a call or, or talking to him one-on-one -on -one about this. And uh, so we all have a good understanding. Uh, as I say, I don't know about the legality of it. I have to run that with Scott to get some advice uh, as to whether or not we can uh, even do this. It's just, he was, he was actually exploring, I think, today more than anything. And, and of course, it was a cold call for me. I didn't know the, the center was even being proposed. It's a 60 by 80 building, according to him, you know, with 18 foot sidewalks, which is a fair size building. Sidewalls, what? 18 foot high. Sounds like it might be similar to the one they got at Phil Campbell. They've got like an indoor practice it's place. A, and a, a lot of cities are getting these. And, uh, he wants to provide one for our kids here. He said a lot of them are involved in uh, wanting to advance their uh, abilities by doing special training. And, and I said, it sounds good. I just, I don't know a lot about it, but I was willing to put it on the table with you guys and let you hear what his, sort of what his plan was. What's her name? Tyler Knight. Tyler Knight. Uh -huh. They've met with us here. Married to Olive Jordan. Yeah, they have a pharmacy. Well, he's in Keith's Kitchens. Keith's Kitchens, and I can't hardly say that first word. What's the name of it, Scott? Can you say it for me? It's just Keith. Okay, Keith's Kitchens. That's his. His company he affiliates with, and uh, his wife has a pharmacy in South Hamilton. You can get an acre over there that they want for sale next to the rec center, be a good place. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, where there's food and acres I guess what he's <coughs> going to be doing is really can't be handled at the rec center. I thought about that, Herb, because we've got a rec center here in Hamilton, but I think. What he's going to be doing is providing advanced training for these kids that want to specialize in the sport or build themselves up, become more physically able when they're in high school. There'll be a lot of weight training, things like that. It's not offered now professionally, and uh, uh, it'll make these kids stronger when they're ready to play high school ball and this kind of thing. But. Uh, at any rate, that's, that was his goal, and he's looking for an acre of land to put this building on. He said, I don't currently have that acre of land, but I'd like to get one if the city has one available to put this building on, since I'm going to be providing a service. And he said, I'm providing the building. Um, I don't know, see an associate, so he said, we've been talking about this, and I think he's consulted with some other people, but They've got the building worked out if they can find a spot to put it on. I think we ought to, we got land over there, plenty of it over there on one side, you know, yeah. give them a day to build that on because it's a good thing for the kids, what he's talking about there. Yeah. And it's something we currently do not have, and uh, so far as I know, uh, there not be any exclusions, you know. I imagine uh, the parents, of course, would sponsor this child into these programs, but uh, it's something they could get here instead of going out of town for it. Who 
got quite a few acres there at Fort Brunson there was anyway. 47. We don't need to put the thing out in the middle of it or anything. If there's no over on one side or something that wouldn't make them hurt anything. It should move the heart out of it, you move and keep it located so it don't interfere with other plans right. you might have the rest of the park. Mm -hmm. Well, let's think about that and, and I'll try to get more information if y'all are interested and I'll find out from Scott if it's something the city can do and then we decide if it's something we want to do inclusively and, you know, about the majority uh, vote and that kind of thing. And uh, we might even want, if y'all want to get involved, we might want to get him to come and present his plan to all of us and y'all wouldn't be here at second hand. I kind of like one of these things to be delivered by the individual with the need, you know. And that way there's no, no way that it's misinterpreted or misunderstood. Yeah, you probably need to put it in a contract with him to give him the paper to put that on before the kids are found to be gone. But he'll, he decided not to do that and it didn't work out and closed it down. He'd pay so much for the acre of land building on it or the building would go to the city. Those fine-tuning matters like that are important for there's some, you know, that it go back to yeah. 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 the building go to us with the light. Those are those are good points and <coughs> discussion like this it makes it more doable because we we're thinking through it a little bit. And just to, to do something because we're asked to do it is I think it's a worthy cause, right? First yeah, of all. I do too. Okay. Uh, yeah. but but for the taxpayers, yeah. uh, we, yeah. we should protect their money and land sure. too. So sure. this well, that's, would, if that's what he's wanting to do, and we did that, we're protected, and he's yeah. got the land. Yeah. Um, well, this is something that we'll explore and see if it's uh, doable, first of all, and then I might want to invite him to our next work day and, and uh, have him work explain exactly where he's going with this, what he wants to do, and how we could fit into the scheme of things if we can participate. Um, we might need to have a special meeting uh, fairly soon. Uh, we've had someone in our industrial park in recent times uh, looking to move here with a plant and uh, we, uh, I've been talking with uh, folks at C3. I've talked to Scott. Uh, if this thing keeps moving forward, we're going to have to decide what we can do and the way to help this company get here. They're a Japanese firm. They're looking for, for about 20 acres in our industrial park. They're in the car business. They're, uh, they're a hub of the car business. Uh, and I, I'm just beginning to get this thing motivated. I can't make an announcement here at this table today, but I'm just saying we probably are going to have to be called together um, to meet with um, Scott and, uh, and hear the proposal uh, that comes through C3 and, and see if we can entertain this company's uh, moving here. And they're, uh, they're talking possibly part manufacturing and part distribution. Uh, so we're, we're hoping that this pans out. And I have found out they're not a fly by night company, they're an established company that's already uh, pretty wide open in Birmingham area. But they, they're looking to get more in the hub of the auto industry. I feel like this is a strategic spot in Hamilton, so. That's what we need, that's what we need, jobs. Mm -hmm. So, I just want to put y'all on notice that I may have to have a special meeting for this. Depends on how it develops. This has started before New Year's. There's more talk ongoing and it's, it's it's coming down to a point I think that we're going to have to lay a proposal on the table for these people to see if they'll uh, accept it or not. And, um, 
one thing that I like that was said when they started to leave our industrial park, uh, one of the guys looked at the other one and said, we found our new headquarters. So I like that kind of talk. And they're a big thing to have them. How do you get that? Well, we've been meeting for a long time. Maybe they've got buddies. What they always do have to do. They usually allow another plant to them. They do something with their land down there, too. They do something with their land. Yeah. In December, I heard from a, a company in Huntsville. And they're also targeting Hamilton for an expansion. They said they're out of employees in Huntsville. And they want to target Hamilton for a plant. About 200 people would be involved in working for them. So I'm supposed to meet with them for the months out. I've got uh, Tim's name and company name. I've gone online to check them out. And they have a spot running on the industrial site for Huntsville. They work about 650 people there. But he said there's nobody in Huntsville that he can hire anymore. That they're out of them. They're out of personnel. They're, they don't have any workers. So we've got two chances here, and we're going to try to make both of them work. But uh, I'm just going to keep y'all kind of informed. But, Neither of these is an announcement today, but once you know we're working towards some new industry. Uh, we'll tell you any more about our entire company. We went to see that day. It's going to go down on the uh, Albert or something. And uh, what did we go to? Decatur? Decatur, yeah. Decatur, wasn't it? Uh, Wilkes. They, uh, they know that this Loves is going to have a tire service in a 24-hour service center with it. They've backed away once they figured out that they're going to be selling tires right across the street from them and working the interstate 24-7. Loves is bringing a full service with their, their organization. Tire and road service. And that's to start March 21st. I've got a starting date on it. Loves is the yes. start time. Today I got a call from uh, the uh, new store that's coming in to replace goodies. They'd like to have us at a ribbon cutting with them on March the 17th at 9 a.m. And they're happy to be coming to Hamilton and uh, they think it's going to be a good location for them. Where are they going? They're going in the store that good is 1500. Oh, down here. Yeah, Sweet B, Sweet B, I believe, is the Sweet. It's 1500 Military Street South is their address. But it's in that shop. So. Yeah. Right now, uh, what is it? Uh, it's war coordinates. Yeah, yeah. How you spell it? G O D G O R D M A N S. Coordinates. Oh, coordinates. Okay. And uh, they, they sell a variety of things, and they they seem excited about coming to Hamilton. I, I would uh, actually. They may be a little more diverse in what they do than Goodies were. Right? Right. Isn't it part of Goodies? It's just like a, a bigger branded store of. I think I think you can buy more things in there. Than right. Than you can. I, I thought I saw, saw something on the internet where they were talking about they were changing some of their Goodies stores to this thing. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> what time? What type of industry is that uh, Huntsville company? What type of industry is that Huntsville company in? They're they're a sewing operation. Sewing. Got government contracts, as I always say. And they don't they don't build anything that's not super strong, like fair trooper uh, uh, harness and 
uh, climbers harness for climbing poles, firefighter packs, belts, for federal firefighters, this kind of stuff. They're in the uh, super uh, strong products. <coughs> Everything they do is a government order contract. Um, I was going to mention something else. That was two seconds ago. Oh, this contract with AirDAC, I think, is most most important that we handle that promptly and don't let it ever expire. I, I think if it ever expires, we'll be it'll be lost forever. You guys got anything you want to discuss or talk about this afternoon? Well, I had a person ask me today if we would put. Grandview Drive on the list to be paved next time there's funds available. It's, one of, our, it's one of our longer streets. And Not too well, I think. It, it's probably, uh, it's probably, I think it was 40 something years since they've even had crushed stone and tar. Um, but it still didn't level the road, Tammy, is the problem. It's got yeah. these movements. Right. Cars move. Uh, got a big dip right after you turn off 43. Yeah. To the right. Yeah. Um, I would love to see that road with asphalt. It's a cut through road. A lot of people use it. It's a handy road for people. And with that new bridge over there, I mean, it just makes it safer. And this road really needs to be considered. Um, I noticed they start on our housing authority construction today. Yes. I say today, it's the first time I've heard it. Yeah. There's supposed to be uh, three crews moving in at the same time. Rodney said that job should really move quickly once they get into it. Uh, they got the street block that goes into it. You know, that's going to be a nice project that we're doing over there for those people. What roads have been paved thus far? Uh, Sabbath, uh, this road between 43 and Steel Street, we got it, and we got uh, Second Avenue. Third Street, we got the loop down there by Watha Station and back to the Housing Authority buildings over there. Um, I think it's a total of six streets that we do. They're all done? They're done. Oh. And I had somebody ask me, did they address the uh, springs under this street before they paved, or did they use the, the weeping asphalt so they aren't going to undermine, or what about how was that handled? They tried to address it. I don't know if they did a great job of it, but they recognized that there was water there before they started the project. And uh, Mike and I talked about it. Uh, no, Rodney and I talked about it. Rodney thinks we've conquered part of the water. I don't know if we did 100% and really, I don't know. But that was addressed, and I, I, don't, I hope they get it handled. It's They're going to come back to the streets now. To, um, to new paved streets. Uh, pretty much, I think that'll, that may fall on us. I'm not sure. They did this one over here, but I'm not sure we'll get striking on all of them. This is what we're using part of the tax money for. We voted to do the striping. Yeah, I think, yeah I think it should be. It would, they look like they did a really good <coughs> job, and if they're striped, it'll look like it'll look a lot better. Right. And these three stripes on yeah. doing a good job. Yeah, yeah, they've done a good I had, I had a lady call me uh, this past week, and she doesn't have very good vision, but she's still allowed to drive. She said striping helps her so much. She said, I can tell where I am on the road without worrying about being in somebody else's path. She said, striping is what I depend on when I'm driving. Well, I think all of us do. I do, I know. 
Uh, and on the right, he did. Uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, we've got a few streets that, that we might have uh, a little bit of a problem putting the center line in, but there's a lot of our streets that traffic moves pretty fast yeah. on. And I, I believe in striping myself, and all of them that we can stripe, I think we should. But most of these streets are city streets, like here. they're narrow, yeah. and, and they really need the striping so people can see where well, to stay I, on well, I agree. the right side of the road. They're not as, don't have the, on the side yeah. coming out that extra two or three feet, and so they're narrow. Seventh is bad that way. Yeah. When you come out where they where they had to put the culvert in and come up that hill, yeah. you still got little drop offs on both sides. Yeah. And that uh, <coughs> captain will give you where to stay anyway. There. Mm -hmm. Mark's real concerned about the road that goes across Rabbit Hill. I can't remember the lane. He said it's only, he's already got it on this 2020. He's going to do that entire road. He said we might have to even go down to the gravel in some places. He said the road's literally falling apart. Yeah, he's, that road is, that's the first one they're going to do this summer. And uh, he's already told me that it's a must. He said to save that road, we got to get on it at the first opportunity. It's going to tar and gravel in or it's going to pay? We won't be able to pave it. It's a yeah, long stretch of road. That's what I thought. But, but we're going to do our best to fill in all the bad holes before we start paving and then and pave the road as best we can with our equipment. It, it's literally falling apart. It's called something lame, and I keep remembering that name of it, but I call it going over. It joins Milligan Street, and it, it connects us back to uh, 278 eventually. Yeah, it splits and goes down two ways down 278. Yeah, that road is in bad shape, folks. It's probably been a long time since anybody's messed with it because we used to play rabbit over there on, in cars and stuff. Mm -hmm. Long Mark time ago. Got that one moved to the top of the list. He said that's the first one we're going to do anything to when we start a paving this spring. Uh, we, we've really got a lot of work to do where our streets are concerned. And, um, well, we haven't had anything done for how many years? I, I plan to go back for some more state money. Uh, there's a meeting in Tuscaloosa uh, in February. Mr. Cooper's going to be back down there, and I'm going to go back and ask for another dose of money. And, we, we need the state's money to put with ours. We're going to get a little bit more uh, with gasoline money, but we need some lump sum money. We need another $200,000, $300,000 to do some additional paving. But if we get a good grant from the state, I'd be for putting brand new in it because it's, it really needs that spot. But it helped when you go to those meetings like that for him, if you make some pictures of what you're wanting to get the money for, the streets that are so bad, because some of those you're speaking of, if they saw the street, if they had any, I think it would help them to decide to give you some money to fix them. First time Mark and I went, he said, I'm not listening, boys. He said, you didn't bring me any plans. He said, get your plans together and come back to see me. So we went back and showed him the specific streets we wanted to work on, he said, no, I'm listening. He said, he said, what have you got to put in it? I said, we don't have any. He said, well, you'll have to come with some money or I'm not going to give you any money. So um, that's when we got the 200000 He said we needed to come with a plan to show him. If you had two or three of those streets, it's so bad if you care of a picture of it, you know. We uh, get to meet in Spike Brown's conference office, and uh, Spike lives out here at Bethlehem, and that doesn't hurt us any either. No. Uh, Mr. Cooper uh, will listen a little more when it's somebody that knows where Hamilton is, you know. 
east, east from down Montgomery Way or somewhere. Anyway, that's where his office is. He comes to these district offices occasionally. And he was a accountant by training. Now he's become the DOT man. He's a numbers man. He, he likes to he likes to see the numbers. Okay, you got the numbers and pictures. Don't crowd the money. <laughs> Don't have the money. So you got the money and I got the pictures. <laughs> we appreciate y'all being willing to come out to these sessions. If you have any questions of Tyler, if you have any questions uh, about other matters, Ricky proposed the insurance. If you want a copy of the insurance plan, we'll get you some copies made. I don't know if you've got a copy in your packet today or not. But anyway, this is coming up. The total is 152000 and some change. That might change a little bit if Ricky adjusts our recreation center building. I don't think it will change a lot. Not based on the numbers he gave us. We got $3 million. 300,000 insurance for $4,000. So if he adds another million or more to it, it will be over probably a thousand dollars difference in the policy. It may not be that much. Anyway, I think we need a little more than we got. But he's doing some research on that right, right now and he's going to report back to us on the findings. So I'll let y'all know about that as soon as I know. Hope everybody has a good holiday next Monday. We'll see y'all Tuesday if we don't see you <laughs> <laughs>